Good evening. Hello, happy people. It's good to be with you. Welcome to our daily devotions, scripture that encourages you to pray. And I'm so excited about this time we're going to have together tonight, because tonight we're going to be talking about this resource that we're working on uh, to help Family Shield Ministries, and that's all about a family prayer walk. Good evening, John. It's good to see you. I want to encourage everybody as you're joining, and if you're joining later, you're watching this tomorrow morning or whenever it is you're watching, I want to encourage you to um, share this broadcast onto uh, your Facebook page, onto your social media. Uh, let other people um know about this resource. When you do that, you are doing the work of the evangelist, and uh, and that is awesome. It's amazing to see how many people are watching this. So tonight, we are going to uh, look at this topic of a family prayer walk, and we're going to be talking about, so what if I wasn't the best role model as a parent? And we're going to, we're going to talk about that, because what we want to do through this resource is encourage family prayer walking uh, within the families themselves, and then also into their communities. And there's probably going to be people who are going to be considering using this, and they're going to be thinking, thinking to themselves, "My gosh, I, you know, I wasn't, a, I, I haven't been the best parent. I haven't been the most spiritual parent. I've made so many mistakes. Who am I to try and encourage family prayer walking?" We're going to talk about that tonight, and uh, really looking forward to that. A lot of exciting stuff happened today in ministry. I want to give you a little quick highlight on that as well. But first, let's start with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. Thank you for all of your blessings in our lives. Thank you that we get to end our day in prayer and in your word. Father, we pray for the Ministry of Family Shield, and we uh, pray for this uh, family prayer walk endeavor. We pray for many families to be blessed through it and for people to come to faith and for faith to be shared in a loving and winsome way uh, into many communities. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to your will and for your glory. And all of God's children, we all say amen. Amen. So first of all, before I get any further, I want to say thank you to our social media team. You guys are rock stars. You're just so awesome. You're on every night with the broadcast and you answer people's questions. You help them navigate the social media. And it's just such a blessing to be with you. So thank you for all that you do. You're a tremendous blessing. Um, Ash Wednesday is coming up, February 17th, and so it's going to be here before we know it. So kind of preparing for that today, one of the things I, I got to do today was I recorded four episodes with uh, Pastor Phil Ressler. He's the author of this really amazing book, 40 Things to Give Up for Lent. And so we're going to show two of those episodes uh, this week, Thursday and Friday, and then we're going to show two more episodes next week, Thursday and Friday, and then the following Wednesday, of course, is Ash Wednesday. And why I just I think this is such a great resource is because God just inspired Phil to, you know, to get us to think about giving up stuff for Lent, but, you know, not so much like the regular sort of chocolate or wine or, you know, stuff like that, but really to give up stuff that uh, keeps us from experiencing God in fullness. So give up things like unworthiness or anger or impatience and stuff like that. It's, it's just a great resource. And uh, I want to commend it to you. Again, it's uh, 40 things to give up for Lent. And uh, some of the things are um, give up uh, comparison, blame, guilt, uh, entitlement, hatred, apathy. There's 40 of them. It's a great resource, so check that out. Uh, today, also, I get to do uh, training for our Hispanic uh, ministry candidates, and so there's now five that I'm, I'm getting to train. We actually had the camera running just a little while ago. You can scroll down on the Facebook page there for Faith, and you can see it. And uh, if your Spanish is pretty good, you can sort of pick it up. It's really cool what God's doing with that. So praise God for that. Got to work on two sermons. And um, it's, it's been a full day. It's been a great day. And so now we're going to talk about the family prayer walk and specifically the topic of, so what if I, as a parent, you know, don't feel like I've been a, a perfect model, uh, role model as a parent? How do I um, talk about having a family prayer walk with my family? So I want to start with a little story. When I was uh, a network support missionary in New Jersey, one of the things that I focused on was helping urban congregations reach out and connect in their communities. And I got to work with immigrants from around the world and uh, longstanding uh, historic congregations there as well. And so one of the congregations that I worked with was Redeemer Lutheran Church in Newark, uh, 664 Broadway was the address if memory serves me correctly. And, um, and so I had, um, 
one of my partner churches in the Midwest uh, wanted to come out and pay a visit. And uh, Scott Seidler was the pastor there at the time. It was Concordia Lutheran Church in Kirkwood, Missouri. And Scott um, came out, and uh, he may have had one or two people from his staff with him. And so my district president, Bill Kletke, he, he wanted to go along and see what this is all about. So I had, I had one of my major supporters with me. I had the district president with me, local African immigrant pastor with me, and some of his elders with me. So we went prayer walking in the neighborhood there around the church. And if you've never been to Newark, especially this part of Newark, then I can sort of paint the picture here for you. Uh, the, the lots are, are not wide. They're probably not more than 60, 80 feet wide. Um, you know, there's maybe 10 feet between the homes. The homes are basically shotgun style homes. And um, so we're going through the neighborhood and uh, uh, you go up to the door and uh, ring the doorbell, knock on the door, as the case may be, somebody would come out and I would introduce myself. I'd say, hey, I'm here with some friends. We're praying for the neighborhood. Love to pray for you. How can we pray for you? So I'll never forget, Scott Seidler and I were kind of walking in front of the group and we get up to this one house and I knock on the door and um, this uh, this uh, little girl answers the door. And... Um, and uh, I, I, I said to her, I said, uh, I said, hi, is, is your mom or dad home? And, um, and she says, yes. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a small house. You can hear everything that's going on in there. And she goes around the corner and she disappears back to where I'm guessing probably the kitchen was. And you could hear it just as plain as day. Mom, there's six men at the front door looking for you. <laughs> Holy cow. So the, the mom comes to the front door and I introduced myself. I said, hi, I said, my name's Jim Buckman. I'm, I'm here with some friends of mine. We're praying for the neighborhood. We'd love to pray for you. How can we pray for you? And I'll never forget this um, young mom. She, uh, she, looks, she looks down and she looks up and, and she looks me in the eyes and she says, well, today um, we got served with divorce papers from their father. So you, you can pray for these uh, two little girls. And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, we, we will do that. We will, we will pray for them and for you. And I looked down at my watch and I said, I said, ma'am, we're going to be uh, down at the church here in about 45 minutes. And uh, we're going to be praying for you. And this church is going to walk with you. And um, you're not going to go through this alone. And I, I'd like to introduce you, uh, this over here, this man here is Pastor Lawrence Boy. He's the pastor of the church. And, um, and these are some of his elders. And, um, and they'll, they'll be following up with you. And I'll never forget what that lady said to me next. She said to me, she said, uh, you know, <clears throat> this is the first time that a church has ever come to my house. I said, well, praise God. I said, uh, we'll be back and, and we'll be with you uh, in this. So know that tonight, that you're not alone. And she, she thanked us for coming by. And, you know, I share that with you because tonight we're talking about being a perfect parent. Come on. There's no such thing as a perfect parent. When, um, when you go prayer walking, you are... Um, you are going to pray for people who are not perfect parents, and neither are you a perfect parent. Uh, and that's all okay, because quite frankly, if we were perfect, we would not need Jesus, right? Right. That's why it's called grace. And honestly, you know, um, when I mean, just start in Genesis and just start reading through the Bible. My gosh, show me a perfect parent, you know. I mean, you just, you just start with, with Adam and Eve, I mean, the very first parents. And God gives them some pretty simple instructions, you know, hey, have a happy family life, uh, do whatever you want, basically, just don't eat from these two trees. Not that complicated. How'd that work out, right? I mean, you know, you just just go through the Bible and and, and say and just ask yourself, where where are perfect parents, you know, in, in all of this? I mean, you you know, you look at you look at Noah right? He's the only righteous man on the face of the earth. And this is the same guy who gets so drunk, he falls asleep, passes out naked, uh, and his boys have to clothe him. I mean, you can read about it in Genesis chapter 9. Uh, look at Abram and Sarah. And, you know, how, how are their parenting skills? You know, God comes and says, look, I got this. You're going to have children as numerous as the sand on the shore and the stars in the skies. And, 
and uh, you know, just stick with me and trust me, it's all gonna work out great. And how they, what'd they do? No, nope, they took matters into their own hands. Uh, Abraham uh, has a child through the slave girl, and uh, it's just, it's a train wreck, you know? I mean, just just go through the Bible. There's, there's just, there are no perfect parents in scripture. And so, you know, I think as, as you are considering being, you know, using this resource, being a, uh, having a family prayer walk and uh, doing this with your family members and then perhaps even going out into your community and prayer walking, I, I want to encourage you, don't let the fact that you haven't been a perfect person keep you from doing this. I mean, if anything, that is a great point of discussion with your children. You know, I, 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 I remember when I was, my gosh, I mean, I was in my 20s, so that, that was a little while ago. And I remember I was talking with my dad. And, um, and my dad said to me, he said, he said, um, Jim, don't, don't be a photocopy of me. And I kind of, you know, sat up and, and, and thought about that. You know, I, I listened to him. He said, he said, don't, don't, don't be a photocopy of me. He said, you know, um, look at my life and, um, where you see good in my life, imitate that, keep that, but the rest of it, get rid of it. And you know, I am so thankful that my dad had that conversation with me. Um, and then in my in my marriage, my wife Kathy and I, we've had this conversation that my dad had with me. My wife Kathy and I, we've had this conversation also. You know, talking about our respective parents, and you know, not to not to break the fourth commandment. You know, I think it, I think we are honoring our parents by talking in a loving way about where do we see God's influence in their lives and things that we want to do as parents, and then maybe one day, Lord willing, as as grandparents even. Um, but then also then, you know, honestly, in the light of scripture, looking at, at our parents and saying, you know, what things don't, don't we want? And now Kathy and I, we've had this same conversation with our children, um, as well. And so I think, I think honestly, you know, to, to come to this realization that, you know, you're not a perfect parent. I think that's a great thing. That's a healthy thing. Um, you know, that's, I mean, that's what we do in church in confession and absolution. We, you know, we admit, you know, we're not perfect. We're far from it. We've sinned and fallen short of his glory. And, uh, but, but because of the faith that he gifted us with, we turn to him and we trust in his love and his mercy. Amen. Amen. Give God a thumbs up, a smiley face. He's in this with you parents. Um, and I, you know, I just want to share this thought with you also that recognizing our inabilities as a parent, you know, uh, when you're going to do your family prayer walk time with, with your family, um, recognizing our inabilities as parents helps us, right? It helps us to direct our family's focus to their perfect heavenly father. And that's really where the focus belongs anyway. And I, I just want to close tonight's uh, devotion uh, on, on prayer and scripture by just asking, you know, you know, what good role models uh, do you have that you can talk to for coaching? I'm sure you have some in your life, you know, and, and, and maybe you've never, you haven't thought about that a whole lot lately. I would just encourage you, um, look for somebody who's got some scars, you know, look for somebody who's, who's been through some tough spots in parenting, but come through it in a healthy way. Um, look for somebody who's going to tell you like it is, who's not going to sugarcoat it for you, who's going to hold you accountable and help, and help you by the power of the Holy Spirit to grow. Um, Parenting is a privilege, it's a joy, it's a humbling experience, and uh, I pray God's richest blessings upon you as you consider having your family prayer walk and starting with your own family members and, and just starting out by praying with them on a consistent and regular basis. And then, uh, and then also then looking at how you can pray for extended family members and perhaps even God's calling you to pray for your neighbors uh, in your community. I pray God's richest blessings upon you and um, look forward to tomorrow night and our devotions tomorrow night. So let us go in peace and let us serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.